unto all generations. Amen. I don't know about you all, but I'm sort of feeling churchy a little bit. <laughs> Amen. Why is it blessed us this morning? Praise and worship. And the Lord is in this place. Amen. Amen. Come remind me of how things used to be. When we came into the house of the Lord. Amen. The same that God has restored that unto us this morning. And all of us are real thankful. And we express it in our own ways. Our ways are different, but yet we're thankful. Because all of this is to the glory of God. And we praise Him for that. Um, I'd like to say that. God has smiled on each one of us to the point at this point in time we can say it is good to be a Christian. Amen. I think y'all can feel a little bit more excited than that. It's good to be a Christian. It's not that we appreciate that poor posture or that position until we take an inventory of what is going on around us in this world in which we are living in. It's good to be a Christian. Because it could have actually been the other way. And what I mean by the other way is we could still be doing things we used to do that was not right in the sight of God. But thank God, somebody still have some decency and somebody still have good morals Amen. Amen. and I'm honored tonight uh, today brother to be a part of that it's not because I've been so holy uh-huh. it's not because of my own account and I'm, I love to say that because I know where I, where I used to be what I used to do and I like and I like saying it because I enjoy giving God the credit Amen. and him the praise Amen. and that's not just my personal Thing. I, know, I know you have your own. Amen. But either way, I still say glory to God. Amen. Amen. So again, we thank you. We give honor to not only the Spirit of Christ, but all of you, our preachers and ministers. I'd like to recognize the presence of the moderator here today with us, the vice moderator. Because when I fail, along with his brother wife. Amen. And uh, we do have a visitor in the house, and a couple of visitors. We certainly like to recognize your presence here, and we're glad to see you. Uh, and we are thankful that you have graced us uh, today with your, your presence here. And we do see you, and we say to you that you're welcome. Amen. Thank God for you as well. Amen. How many of y'all have a beautiful week this week? That's that question because whatever we have the opportunity to enjoy and whenever we have to do it, we have to recognize it is at the expense of grace and God's kindness and God's love towards us. And sometimes it might not go as we wish, but when the Lord is in control, it works out for us. Amen. And I've said in previous, previous, uh, previous times, brother, we might not always understand the counsel of God or we might not understand His will. But there's one thing we all can do. Amen. We can trust His will. Amen. Amen. You can trust that might not comprehend it, might not understand it, but God is all-knowing. He knows things way beyond our faults. And I often, often say that if things are working the way that we want them to work, it could be that God is not in it. We have to work according to His will. And so we thank Him for that. Y'all ready for the Word? Amen. Amen. I was, I was reading this morning, early this morning, 
Um, and this goes out for the churches, uh, not just six runs, but in this community. In fact, throughout the world, I'm going to say the world, I'm going to make it a global thing. You know, when the Lord said in Jeremiah, I think it's the third, third chapter, that he would give the people shepherds who would feed the flock. He starts out by saying, woe unto the shepherds who destroy and scatter the flock. But if you keep reading that, he says that I will give my people shepherds who would feed them. Amen. And as I looked at that, I noticed that he says nothing about forcing anyone to eat. But you can eat as you please because the shepherd has the heart of God to feed his flock. flock. Amen. Amen. Churches everywhere who is feeding God's people we might take it lightly, we might not think much of it. But it's good to be able to come into the house of the Lord or whatever setting you're in and be able to eat as the shepherd feeds. Amen. Amen. And then he says that when he would do that, that his flock would be blessed because the shepherd is feeding according to God's purpose. I take pleasure trying to convince many everywhere that we need to embrace the plan of redemption wholeheartedly. We need to accept what Christ has done for us, not just in this world only, but in the world to come. He has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Believe it or not, brothers, we all, and sisters, we all were at that point at one time. But redemption has changed that. It's put us into a position where we can truly love a God who loves us in spite of those who do not like him or love him. Don't take it lightly. I'm saying Today, don't take it lightly that you're sitting in this pew at this time, at this moment, because I don't. Just to be able to come into his divine presence. I have no doubt his presence is here because my belief is in the word where two or three are gathered in his name. I'm there. And I, I, I'm just convinced of that, and we know that. So I look around and I see all of us in this wonderful setting, this blessedness. And we ought to thank God. Amen. I know you do, but you ought to just thank Him every time you think about it. I'm getting ready to take my text. But let me just say this last thing. Call it old age, call it getting old, call it wisdom, call it whatever you might want to title it. But not only me, but there's some of you who have the point now that mundane things are not just that important. Earthly and material things are just not that so important anymore. Because we have come to the conclusion that earthly things are only good for this earthly moment. In time. But afterwards, amen, we're facing a situation where things will get different. You alright, baby? Uh, you alright? You alright? Okay. Just check. Things are, things are different, so we praise Him for that. Let's show this choir some love. And put their hearts into, into the singing until we all are blessed. Amen. And I thank God for each choir member that has blessed us this morning. Second Peter chapter one. Amen.
And I'm going to be preaching from the title. I'm going to talk about evolving into God's purpose. Amen. Amen. Evolving into God's purpose. First, Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 3, and it reads as follows. According as his divine power have given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that have called us to glory and virtue. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. For if these things be in you and about them. They make you that ye shall never be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see a fall and have forgotten that he was purged from his old nature, or from his old sins. Wherefore, the reverend brother, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fail. You may see it. Evolved in, in to God's purpose. Evolved in. Somebody say evolving. Evolve. I'm not going to ask you to define that because I'm sure many of you all have your own definition of what it means to evolve. Going from one point to another or going into something different. I want to ask this question before y'all go to sleep on me. <laughs> How many of y'all can really accept the fact that Christians and believers are evolving? Well, I guess not many. Nobody said anything, but but it is true because all you have to do is look at where you started from. And look at where you are now. All of that was the process of evolving. Amen. You went from a beautiful, bouncing baby, born again believer, Amen. into a person that God has purposed for his own reason, and not only for his reason, but for the benefit of yours. We are different, aren't we? Look at, look at the fight that you once, Paul says, I was once a child, but now I'm a man. He evolved from a child into manhood. That's what's happening. So I want to take that metaphor and I want to look at that example of it. I want you to see it. How you and I, we are evolving into God's purpose. God has a purpose for all of us. Amen. For you and me. And it's not for self-praise. It's not for you to get the honor. It's not for you to get the glory. It's for his purpose. Yes, Amen. And the only way that we can become uh, 
being utilized for his purposes, we have to continue to evolve. Now, this statement, and we're going to move on, think about this. And I want you to kind of, if you will, understand what I'm saying. Uh, being a believer is not a process. It's not a process. It's not this thing where this happened, and this got to happen, so this can happen. And this won't happen until that happens. But it is constant evolving, or moving, growing, becoming different. Amen. Okay, you got saved. All right, yes, you did. But was that the beginning or was that the end? No. It started as the beginning, but it went into what you are now and what you will be. Amen. Amen. Y'all still with me? If you see where you are the day that you got saved and accepted Christ as your personal Savior, if you're in the same position, something is wrong. Amen. Ain't that right? Amen. Amen. We should be getting better and getting doing things differently. Now, all right, so how does this evolve and take place? What 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 is it? What is what is it that that that, that, that starts it and keeps it going? Paul says here, I'm excuse me, Peter rather says here, in this chapter, in verse 3, he says, according to his divine power, he hath given us all things that pertain to life. Now, if you got whatever you have that pertains to life, as a believer, we, we, we obtained it by his divine power. Now, divine power is power that is beyond this world. It's not, it's not physical power. It's not natural power, but it's divine. It's just divine power. And because of that power, we have been granted all things that pertains to life. Amen. And I'm not talking about just life here. Amen. I'm talking about the life to come. Amen. See, where we make our mistake is we put God in a space of confinement. Yeah. Yeah. We lock him in in one spot, one place, and thinks that he belongs there. But our God is the omnipresent God. He's everywhere. He's too big to be confined. He's too great to be locked into one position. Amen. We just don't lock him in at greatest six runs and think he's not exposed to others. Y'all help me here. Amen. And we don't lock him in to just one particular person. Amen. God is God by himself. Now, we got this power of because of his divineness. Amen. It's nothing that you went to school for. Nothing that you educated yourself about. It's not even your position in life or what you stand for. It's all because God has dropped his divineness in you. And along with this divineness comes the opportunity to know all things that pertains to life. And not only do we know all things pertaining to life, he says also in things pertaining to godliness. Somebody say godliness. Why do you think that we are godly? Why do you think that we are holy vessels? Why do you think that we are clean vessels? It's because the Lord dropped his divineness in us. And gave us the opportunity to live godly lives. I know we don't want to hear about this too much, but God still requires godliness. Amen. Don't think you can skip along and sit alone. Amen. You have to be godly in order to be involved into his purpose. 
fact, he tells us kind of harsh in his saying, but he that have not the Spirit of God is none of his. And those are not my words. Those are his. So he requires it. So he has dropped this divine power in us that we have all things that pertains to eternal life and to godliness. Y'all with me? Amen. I don't know why I keep jumping in my spirit and my mind, but verse 3, to get it according to his divine power. Amen. No other power but his. Amen. He has given us all things that pertains to life and to godliness. And besides that, the latter part of that says, and not only that, but it is through the knowledge of him. And more we know about it, the more we learn about it. While we have this divineness embedded in us, and the fabric of our souls, the more we understand and learn about God. Amen. Oh, Peter says here that it is through the knowledge of him who have called us to his glory. Well, Amen. Some of y'all thought, thought you got there because you just decided you wanted to go there. <laughs> Some of y'all thought you got in his presence because you're gifted, talented. Some of y'all think you got there because you're smart and educated. Some of y'all think you got there because of your stature, your status. Your social environment, who you know, how significant you might be. But nobody comes into his divineness except they are called into it. Amen. Help me, Holy Spirit. Amen. I wish I could preach this morning to make y'all happy, but I've got to tell you the truth. You got here because God called. The Bible says that no man comes to the Father except the Spirit draws him draws him. And if anybody is not experiencing the drawness of the Holy Spirit, you might as well just close, this, close your door, go home, sit down, because you can't come on your own. And it's when the Holy Spirit draws us. Now why is that? Because you would never have the mindset to come into his divineness except God's hand was upon you. Amen. Y'all don't have to believe me. Look at, look at our society. Look at our world in which we live in. You're seeing things now you never dreamed that you would see. People doing things that's beyond comprehension. You would never understand it. You would never understand what people are doing today because they have, they like, they like to be the, the power of his divineness. And it's sad to say a lot of young folk are doing things today that I just don't understand. Crime that you would not believe would be committed. Because there's the light of divineness and godliness in our society. Y'all don't want to hear this. And I want to tell you something, brothers and sisters. If you're going to evolve into the purpose of God, you got to maintain that divineness. It ain't like you just get up one morning and say, I'm going to be okay this week, and next week you start doing your own thing. Don't work that way. Amen. God does not work that way. Amen? Amen. So we have been called. Amen. Now look at verse 4. This is whereby are given unto us exceedingly, exceeding great and precious promises. Now why are these promises given unto us? That by these promises you might partake of the divine nature. Hallelujah. <laughs> if we had to keep this end of the body, we wouldn't be partaking of his divine. Because he promised it to us, we can walk in those promises. He kept the promises not for his benefit, but for ours. 
so that we could walk and partake of his divineness or his divine nature. Now guess what happens when we step over into his divine nature? Look at what happens next. We are blessed in this way because what it allows us to do is to escape the corruption that is in this world through the lust that we all once had. Hallelujah. It's kind of like this. The both of them cannot coexist. Amen. The corruption of lust that we all experience cannot exist with his divineness. That's why he put us in that position so we could escape the corruption that is in this world. Now notice now, he didn't say that the corruption that is in heaven, the corruption that is in this world. Why is that so powerful? Because this is where we are. We are in this world. God has given us the ability to walk among what is going on around us and yet maintain his divineness. Still do it. Amen. Now this is not to say that we're not going to have some issues. This is not to say we're not going to have some problems. This is not to say that we all going to agree on that. But if you've got an ounce of respectability, for his divineness. Whether you agree or disagree, the thing is this, at the end you'll come together. Amen. Let me put a stake here. I was studying Moses this week. Now I'm deliberately taking my time now, okay? I, I was looking at Moses' ministry. This is what I saw. I saw this. When God brought Israel out of Egypt, Okay, y'all know the story. Moses was taking care of Jethro's flock on the back side of the desert. While he was on the back side of the desert, he came upon Mount Horeb. Now watch what happens now. When he gets there, now he didn't get there by happenstance. God had to draw him into this position. He's taking care of the flock. He's used to that. But what does he see? He sees a bush burning. Now, there's nothing strange about fire and burning bushes. We see them all the time. But in this instance, it was different because the scripture says that the angel appeared in the bush and the bush was burning but not being consumed. Now, you scratch your head on that. How is that possible? We know that fire destroys. It burns. It destroys whatever. But here is this bush. Now the question is, why is not the bush being consumed? It's because of one thing. The divineness of God was also in the bush. And his divineness, you can't destroy it. Just like you can't destroy it within yourselves. But let me make a point. So God gives him the instructions. He tells Moses what I want you to do. I want you to bring the children of Israel out of Egypt. Moses goes on through his little sequels, uh, through his little uh, statements and things, saying things or whatever. And then he tries to find this reason why he shouldn't go. He talks about it, couldn't speak and all this kind of stuff. If all of that, he finally gives in. God says, go tell the people I've heard you crying, you sighing, because of the taskmasters, but I'm going to bring you out. The elders finally accepted that and believed it. But here's what took place. When it was time for Moses to make his move, instead of things getting better for the children of Israel, they got worse. Now I want you to see the position he's in. The people are hurting. They need assistance. They need some kind of guidance. And the leader has promised them that they were going to be delivered. Yes. Yet, when Pharaoh gets the message when he says, your people's got a problem. They're too idle. They ain't got nothing to do. He commanded the officers, I want you to tell them this. I want you to tell them, uh, we're not going to give you no more straw. And Bob's not giving you no more straw. 
said the amount of brick that you always built, built were making, that's not going to diminish. Diminish. And it got worse. And that's when Moses lost his congregation. Because the people were mad at him. Because things got worse. And when God goes, sent him back to tell him, says, I'm going to bring you out, the scripture says, and they wouldn't listen to him. How do you manage that? How do you escape that? How do you lead somebody that you lost? Here's the answer. It gets back to the point that you still have got, you must continue to evolve. Then all of a sudden, that's the way it goes. All right. Now, before I take the seat, I, got, I want to give you this. When you get home in your leisure time, I want you to jump to verse 5, 6, and 7. I'm not going to spend much time on it. But after he says that we've been called into his glory and to this, he says, and besides this, give it all diligence. In other words, do everything within your ability. Give it all diligence. He says, add to your faith virtue. See that? All right. Now, that means that the onus is, is on me and you. We've been called. We have the divineness. We have the promises. We have the divine nature. Now, the onus is, is on me and you to add, not subtract, but to add to it. What does it say add? He said add virtue. What is that? What you're doing is you're adding some sense of uh, morality, I guess. Put it that way. Some sense of being, of having common decency. Some sense of being uh, in a position where it is a position of strength, holiness, good morals, good character. Add to all of that. In other words, if your faith is going to hang out without good morals and good character, then you're not really saying much. If you don't have that to back up your faith and add to it, now he says add, not subtract, right? Add to your faith. Virtue. Somebody say virtue. All right. And as you begin to add these good qualities to your life, uh, to, to your faith, he says, the next thing I want you to do is to add what? Knowledge. Knowledge. Brothers and sisters, this is on us to give God some assistance so he can help us to evolve into his purpose. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. Now, I'm not going to take them all at one time. The next thing he says, of course, then, you know, to add uh, to your knowledge, he says, add temperance. In other words, some patience or being self control. The ability to be able to analyze your faith, the ability to analyze good quality, good core or morals. Look at it closely, add to it, put it on display where others can see it. And then, he says, add all these things are things that we are involved in. How many of y'all love the Lord? Amen. 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 All right, we're going to get ready for it. Now, he says, for if these things, somebody say, if these things, if these things. <laughs> be in you. <laughs> now, he didn't say a part of you. Not on the outside of us. Yeah. All right? Not so much influencing us, even though they might. But if these things be in you, in other words, inside. Somebody say inside. Yeah. Not on the outside. If these things be in you, and not only being in us, but if they will abound, in other words, become many and much. Increase. They shall make you. Somebody said make you. 
that you should neither be barren nor unfruitful. In the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, the more you get in you, the more you want to know about me. And the more of these things increase in us, the more we can understand exactly who Jesus is. And I want to tell you something, Christ is just more than a name. Somebody help me close. He's not just more, he's more than a name. He's more than even what you and I can conceive. But the good thing is this, if these things be in you, it will help us to increase in the knowledge of him. And not only that, we will be fruitful and not unfruitful. So I thank God that he gives you and me to help us to understand exactly who he is. Now the opposite of that is this in verse 9, but he that liketh these things is blind. And don't proclaim that you're sin when you're not if you don't have these things. He that liketh these things is blind.
to his purpose. And to his purpose. His purpose is that you and I be saved. You and I be delivered. You and I be set free. Because he that the Son set free is free indeed. Back in bondage. No person, neither. Nobody puts us back in to bondage. If the Son have made us free. And I think, brothers and sisters, we're missing that understanding. We're missing the mark because we don't know how important it is to be free. After having escaped the lust of this world, yes, sir. which we all had. And now we're free to worship, to praise, to serve, to be evolving, changing, going in to his ultimate purpose. Get it in there. Let in our lights shine. Some of us are going to think about that too when the scripture says to let our light shine. Why? Let's read the next question. Why? It's to glorify the Father. That's why. Not, not to glorify us, but to glorify Him. I got excited this morning because I believe everything is pumping me. Because I'm telling you, this is a good time to be a Christian, to be a believer. Right now is a good time to be one. Because, if no other reason, the soon coming king is on his way. And if these things be in you, if they're in you, or inside of us, we should never fail. I don't care how bad you get on your job, they may not like you to be in. They might come, they might try to hurt you, but that's all right. If this stuff is in you, you won't fail. That's what the word says. Let me drop this on you, and I promise you this is it. Let me drop this on you. All right. Getting back to this, Exodus. God told Moses, says, now, your, your forefathers didn't know my name. They called me the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. That's how he addressed me. He says, but guess what now? I'm, I'm, I'm throwing this in. This ain't in the Bible. I'm this in. But because you're in my divineness, you're not going to do that. You're going to do my name. Right. You're going to call me Jehovah. Right. They knew me as the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. But you will know me as Jehovah. And guess what? We know him as what? Jehovah. He's our provider. He's our providence. Yes. Our provider. He's Jehovah. That's how we know him. Because when you were sick and weren't supposed to get well, the provider, Jehovah, gave you what you need. I know this thing is wicked. The provider, Jehovah. He's the one. I would almost swear that you wouldn't have made it had it not been for Jehovah. 
Now you can put whatever you want to to his name, it'll work. So I hear somebody saying Jehovah Jireh. Yeah, I heard that. Yeah, it'll work. But the main thing is Jehovah. I'm coming down this morning. It's been a while since I've been down here, but I feel like just coming down. Giving Jehovah some praise. I don't have to skip the pews and run the swing on lights, but in my heart, my heart is saying, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jehovah. I know you as Jehovah. Yeah, you're the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, but I know you as Jehovah. Bless us all. 
somebody's, somebody's finances who might be struggling. Give them that ability to tie and desire. Help them to obey. Stir up somebody's home who's had in trouble with loved ones, children, husbands, or wives, or whatever it might be. Bless like a little kid. And lastly, stir up six runners. to come together. Do your will. Lord, there's some members who have not been back to the church and since the pandemic. Give them that comfort, that mind. Let them know that that you're with them. That they're coming. And they can't come through their worship. Because the devil will sift them as wheat if they stray by themselves. Because you told us not to forsake to assemble ourselves together for a reason. So we can help each other. Edify and build up each other. Stir up those members. And bless them. Not curse them, but bless them. Put your arms around them. Give them the assurance of the comfort that they need. Father, we thank you. In this building today, that's not saved. Don't know you as their personal savior. I'm gonna pray a prayer that I prayed and used to pray a long time ago. Let the Holy Spirit go on a rescue and mission. Not a mission of destruction, but a mission to rescue. And rescue the Lord at any cost, whatever it takes. Safety, so they will come into the full knowledge of your grace and your divineness. We thank you. Whatever sins we've committed, please forgive us. The old committed ones, the committed ones, whatever it is, please forgive us now. And bless us. As the best of probably noticed that scrolling across the screen area has been nicely doing it for us so anyone ever could have serviced it and been with the service really. but um, you can notice on October the 17th and the 18th you saw that uh, we will have our board meetings on, we will have a board meeting on the 17th at 7 o'clock as deacons and trustees and on the 18th we're going to have a church conference the reason why I'm doing this is because I'm going to bring us all together so everybody that knows what we're about to do, especially regarding the mortgage and some other things too, and some other things we're going to talk about. So you don't have a church calendar, but please circle those dates, 17, 18, board meeting, uh, deacons, trustees, and everybody on Tuesdays, 18. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit may he rest and may he abide with all of us 